Hello, hello, all my friends there in the chat. Hello, Rachel and Super Craftual. I like that name. Lois, hello, Beth. And then I know Amy is here and Martha is here. Hello, hello, Mimi Cakes, Diana. Hello, Diana. I just sent you an email, so you'll you can check that later. Hello, Rachel. Let's see here. Can't wait to see what you have up your sleeves tonight. Do so. We have been doing lots of more masculine cards, but tonight I'm going to make a feminine card with the products that we just released because. There are some good ones that we can mix and match in with some older things that we have. I love when we get to this point right after a release and I can start mixing it in with um, things that are a little bit older. Some things that we already have in our stash is so fun. And so let's see here. Jennifer, hello. Brenda, Linda. Let's see here. Susan, hello. Barbara, Lisa. All right, everybody is here. So I'm going to go ahead without further ado. I'm going to go down to my desk. I'm going to be doing some ink blending tonight, which you guys know that I love. Um, and we're going to be using some of the new dyes. So I'm going to go down here. Hello, hello, everyone. All right, so let me go down to our desk view. I've got some die cuts all ready to go. And I'm going to start out with our new vintage creel. Okay. So this was the card that I shared the other night that is really masculine for a fisherman. You know, you're the best catch of all. Great for a um, a spouse or a significant other, a grandpa, something like that, his birthday. But tonight I'm going to turn this vintage krill into a feminine card just by changing up the ink colors, changing some paper, and adding some of our greenery dyes. So I wanted to show that. And then I'm going to start out by ink blending this layering little basket. I'm going to pull all of my pieces out here so we can get a look at those. So I'm going to put my lid over here. This, I want that to be that color. So I've got all my little pieces separated here and we're going to start on some ink blending. I'm going to start with gathered twigs. You can see that everything is cut out of just white cardstock and that's because I can make it and create it however I want to look just by adding ink. I'm going to start out with the top layer that has all that beautiful embossed uh, detail that um, is pressed in there with the die. I'm going to start out and I'm going to work my way back and forth and I want the edges to be darker than the rest of it. And I'm going to swirl this brush back and forth because we've got all those little nooks and crannies in there that are made, uh, that make it look like it's woven, like it's um, got some kind of texture to it. Now I can kind of go back that I've got like a good base color down and I'm really going to hit along the edges. So I'm just going to keep working my way around here. I'm not going to do too much up in here because that's where the leather piece is going to go um, when we layer that on top. So now I've got that. I can go ahead and start working on this piece. And I probably don't even need to dip back into my ink. I'm just going to take it directly off of my mat. And there's really not even any reason to ink any of this stuff down here because that's going to be all hidden and covered up when we layer this piece together. All right. Let's see here. Next, I can do the lid. Now, in this die set, there are two different lids. Let me see if, nope, I didn't put it out here. Let's, let's pull that out. Let me find it in my little stash here. Okay, there are two different lid options. So there is the lid like this that makes it look like that basket is closed. And then there is the lid that has the little flaps on it 
that where you can have the basket open and stuff things down on the inside. So you could have it either way. If you wanted to have the lid closed and have, you know, some fish laying out to the side or even flowers or greenery or something like that, you can do that. So there's the options are available in that die set. Okay, so I'm going to do the lid open because we're going to stuff this thing and we're going to make it look like a feminine bouquet. I still am not sure what sentiment that I'm going to use, but I've pulled out two of our new sentiment sets and I'm just going to kind of pick and choose to see which one I want to add. And again, I'm just getting really good coverage with my brush back and forth to get down into all those little nooks and crannies. And then I can kind of take it and go right up along the edge to add a little bit of darkness to make it look a little bit more vintage or like it has some darker worn areas right along the sides. Just dragging that along. And then that piece or those pieces are now all done. So I'm going to put my gathered twigs aside and I'm going to do the leather pieces. So I'm not even going to clean up my little mat here, but I am going to kind of move it out of the gathered twigs. And this time, instead of going for like an orangey red leather, like I did on the fishing card, this time I'm going to use frayed burlap. You can see here it's a little bit more of a taupey kind of almost mushroom color. And let's see here. I want to make sure I have my the correct brush. Before I even dip into the ink, I am going to see what I have on my brush here. Let me go down. And we're just going to do a once over on this and get it really good and juicy and I'm working it back and forth to really get it down into those little lines that look like they have been sewn in and then let's hold this up to see what that's going to look like across the front okay so do you see what we're having we're, we've got now do you see how this one is really red leather and then we've got the more kind of taupey color so that is exactly what i wanted now i can take the top piece that goes on the lid i'm just going to set that right inside and use the ink that is already there on my mat and just swirl it around on my mat to get really good coverage there and then I can set that, let's see here, do I want it? No, I want it darker. So I can just go right back over it and get some really good coverage there. Let's see here. Let's pull out the tweezers. Okay, now we've got a good match. So I can put the lid on that. And then it is time to do a little bit let me gather these pieces and set them aside. It's time to do a little bit of matte cleanup because now we're going to do the florals that go inside. I'm going to use our spring greenery dies. And our winter greenery has been really popular. But I thought it would be fun to make this more springy. I do think that it would make a really cute um, holiday card if you wanted to use winter greenery. Um, you could even, you know, put some snowy pieces on there, have maybe a little cardinal or something on your card with it, but we're going to go for springtime here. So this would make a good birthday card or something like that. Okay, now I'm going to start out on some of these pieces with, let me pull them out here. Rustic Wilderness and then Bundled Sage is going to be... Um, another color that I bring in for the stems. I'm going to lay that little guy aside and this one. And then I'm going to move these over just a little bit. 
if I can get him picked up here. There we go. And then I am just going to use what's on my brush first. And I am really adding a lot of pressure down onto the bristles. There we go. And that is looking pretty good. I like that. Now, I think before I do any more, I am going to have to do a little dip because I use every little bit of ink that is trapped in my bristles. There we go. Let's make this that looks like kind of almost like a fern or something like that. Let's make him a little bit darker so we have a little bit of variation between those two stems. And then let's see here what I want to do with the other ones. Let's do the bundled sage. All right, so I'm going to do this little guy in bundled sage and this one. And then part of the stem or part of this one. Now this piece here has layering little heads that you can do a different color to put over the top of that, I'm going to be really easy on myself. I'm not even pulling out or using the little layering head pieces. It's a lot of our new lovely layers dies, especially in the greenery. This set, the dogwood and cherry blossom set is another one. Even the base layer has all the texture pressed in to the bottom layer. And so it makes it really easy. So if you want to add the layers and have dimension and have another look, you can do that. And then if not, you can use it just like this. Okay. So I'm going to lay that aside. I'm going to pull down this stem and I'm going to start towards the bottom. And then you'll notice I'm going to work my way up and I'm going to go pretty lightly and hit some of these little areas. Let me pull this over here. And I'm not being super careful. You can see I'm getting a little bit of green right here and that is okay. We're going to bring in a, a different color, but it's all going to work out in the end. Okay. So I've got my bundled sage. All right. For the little heads on this, I'm going to use a little finger dauber. You can use one of the small little tiny detail brushes or whatever you have. And I'm going to use saltwater taffy. I love this color of um, pinky coral. It's like not a pink and not an orange necessarily. It's a, just a really great color. And I'm going to hit all of these little heads on these flowers. And again, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'll show you what we're going to do. Even mixed in with the bundled sage. And I'm just running that little dauber kind of back and forth so we get down into the little heads of the tops of all those little flowers. And then now that I have that all done, I am going to take that bund bundled sage brush. That's a tongue twister. And I'm just going to kind of give these a once over. Bundled sage, go right up the top. And then there we go. Okay. So let me hold this up and you can kind of see what we're working with here. Okay, I like that. I like it a lot. All right, now, if that wasn't enough just to ink blend it, I'm going to distress these just a little bit. I'm going to take my distress, distress sprayer that just has water in it. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to lay these parts out too. And so I'm just going to make some layers here of all my little die cut pieces. And I'm going to take it out of the container 
and I'm going to tap on water so it falls in little droplets. Just like that. And that way I don't have big sprays everywhere. I can just keep dipping and dropping. Another thing that I can do, I like the way that that's looking. There we go. I'm just going to keep working it all in here. There we go. Okay, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take walnut stain, and this is the regular Distress Ink. And I am, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone here because I like control, but we're going to, we're going to make a mess here. And then I've got this fancy like flicker brush and I'm actually going to put it in here and dip it in the water. And then we're going to make a little swirl here just like that. And then I'm going to start distressing some of these little pieces. There we go. Swirl it and then distress it. And you're probably thinking, what in the world? Now I promise this is going to be pretty when we get it all done. Okay, enough distressing. Let me find my lid and let's put it back on there. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, Rachel. Rachel is saying, oh, you are brave. I am. Okay, now I'm going to take my little damp. Whoops. I've got flying die cuts here. My damp. There we go. And I'm just drying up all my little splatters. Okay, let me find my tweezers. Those are the ones, those are the tool that always get lost on my desk. It's always the tweezers. And I don't know where they are, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and gather here. Okay, we've got that. They're all splattered and distressed. They're gonna be cute when we get them all done here. And then there we go, okay. Now let me do a partial wipe down. Not too clean, but not too bad either. Okay, now this is gonna be a tiny little piece. This is, let me flip it over. You don't realize how much you use your tweezers until, oh, they're right there. Okay, until you can't find them. All right, I have these pin touch metallic pins. So that is what I used on the buckle here. I used it on the motorcycle card. I have a silver one and literally, and it doesn't matter if it gets onto your silicone mat because it will clean off, but I just go over uh, there's gold, there's silver, there's white, there's black. You could cut this out of metallic paper if you wanted to, but I'm just going to cover or color right over this die cut with this gold pin. But I think there's, there may be rose gold, but that's going to look like my little buckle there and that is the inside we don't need that but then that paint pen or that ink just cleans right up off of the mat okay so now let's put all of our die cuts together all right so the first thing that i need to do is i'm going to start adhering my layers. So I'm going to use my liquid adhesive because 
liquid adhesive is the way to go when you want to shimmy everything around. And I'm just going to go around the edges just a little bit because I want to leave my top open because that's where we're going to slide in all of our little greenery pieces. And then I've got the leather. Just a little dab will do you here. And then that is going to fit over the top. And I can shimmy it around while it's still wet. Just like so. And then I've got two of these. I got I have one that I tried earlier. I'm going to put them both together and we can pick out which one we think is the cutest. Let's do this other one. Or I have enough to do two cards. There we go. Shimmy it around until it all lines up. And then I've got my little splattered leather. And then I'm going to lay it down. And I'm just going to keep working my fingers around it until I get everything exactly the way I want it. Okay, now here's our little baskets. Okay, now let's do this piece. Let's do the lid. Have that. If I can get it picked up here now. Tweezers and adhesive. Tiny, tiny bit. This may be right there. Just like that. And I can lay it down. And you can see how that, you can place it just like that so it looks like the little lid is open. Okay. All right, now I've got all my greenery pieces. So let's move our little basket out of the way. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, why at first glance did it look like it was a camper? Oh, I wish it was a camper. We do have a, a camper. I don't know if it is retired or not. Okay, here's all of our little greenery pieces. Greenery pieces. And then I've got two sets because I wanted my little basket to be nice and full. So I did do two sets of these. And of course, this is not how it's going to go, but we're going to we're going to create a cute little bouquet. Okay, so let's put our little buckle on barely any adhesive. Tap, tap, tap. And then that is going to set right down in here just like that. Okay, now. I'm going to work with one of these first. I think I'm going to use this one first. Now, what I like about these is it almost gives the look, and I know it's it's supposed to be like not baby's breath, but there's a, there's definitely a name for this, and I have, oops, lost a flower. Um, I have forgotten what it's called, but I think that we can get the look out um, with this like it is almost like something else. Like it's, um, you know, not little hydrangea blooms, but something similar. Okay, now I'm gonna start loading up my little basket. And I want these to look like little blooms that are kind of mixed in. I'm gonna save this one for here in just a minute, but I'm just gonna start working in 
and nestling in these other colors, these other, and I'm going to snip and add, let's see here, I'm going to snip this little guy right there and start working them and intertwining them into the bouquet. The little fern pieces and I'm going to trim off part of this. And nestle it down in there. And I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of poke it in. And then I've got another one. Let's see here. And I've got these little pieces that I can use again. And I can lift and kind of tuck it down in there. And let's, let's see here. I'm going to tuck this dark green in the back too. You can use your tweezers or your die pick tool or whatever and just kind of work it down in there. Okay, let's get him right back in there. Okay, I'm liking how we're looking here. Let's see here, do I want to trim him off? Probably. Yep. And then I'm going to work him down in here. And we're going to like intertwine it all together. Have it kind of mingle. Okay, let's see if we're ready for this one yet. Not yet. Tweezers or scissors, I should say. I may actually. Pull this one up. I may actually tuck this back in here and then pull them up. But now we've got all kinds of little pink blooms. Let's do another little trim. Right down in there. Let me use my tweezers. them, some of them around. Don't be afraid to get in there. There we go. We're just doing stem surgery here. looking not too shabby. I like how they look like little blooms. Where is this little guy coming from? Or little blossoms. 
We've got different colors of green. And he's looking cute. Okay. Now, do you see what we've got here? Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to quit fussing with it because I could fuss with it all day long. Okay, so next I'm going to adhere my lid. And that is just going to be the little backdrop right back there. Now, if you don't want yours this full or you want your lid to show more, you could leave it completely off if you wanted to. It's really up to you. And I may even wait until we put it on the card to do that because I can just kind of stick it down there in there. Okay, so now let's talk about the card. So I am using our spring vine um, layering frames. Let me pull all these out and let's talk about them. So spring vine layering frames. So I've used this one here. And then I am using our Sweet Stacks ovals, and I've cut two pieces. So I have a piece of craft cardstock, and then I've got a polka dot that is cut from our new pinstripes and polka dots. No, it's not from the new one. It's from the spring edition. Pinstripes and polka dots spring. So we've got a really light green. And then you'll notice the texture on the craft. And that was me playing with our new wood grain embossing folder. So when we layer these together, it's almost going to look like it has a frame, like it's framed together. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, this is going to be easy. We're going to do some liquid adhesive and lay it down and then I can kind of shimmy everything around to get it to where I want it. Okay, there's that one. And then I need to take this and I'm going to add adhesive and then I want to catch the edges. Just like so, and I may do a little wipe down here. And this cardstock I cut because I think it goes pretty well with the corally pink look of that saltwater taffy. And I'm just kind of smearing this around here. Let's make sure that we've got our white card base going the right direction. I'm going to line it up just like that. Line it up again before we dry here. And then I'm going to lay a big, huge acrylic block over the whole thing because when I die cut this, I I'm using a Gemini and it's got a lot of that little edge is making me angry. It's got a lot of um, pressure to it and it will curl your paper if you're not careful. I probably could take the shim out of it. Okay, so let's, I'm going to set this whole, th all of it aside for now. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment. And you guys can help me pick out a sentiment. All right. So I've got two of the new sets pulled out. So I've got the B Steel, which has a lot of great just everyday sentiments. You know, nothing um, masculine about it. So I've got With Sympathy. I've got Thinking of You I could put in there. Um, let's see what I haven't used here. Um, I've used this one, do more what makes you happy. And then I've also got like the little mini messages that are a lot of great ones. So praying for you. Let's see here. Um, there was one. Hello, sunshine. Thinking of you, sending you a happy hello. Uh, I hope you're doing well. There's a lot of just great little basics in here. Um, let's see. Hello, sweet friend. Just me saying hello. Any of these would be great for a, a more feminine card. And so what do you guys think? Do you think 
just in the comments type mini messages or be still and then I will choose one from either way and we'll see you guys can see what we do hello Ascension okay these sets are great um always by your side or oh, you guys are already on it I see it here okay um I'm gonna take a drink of water while you guys are telling me in here be still be still mini messages be still well the amy says the world's a better place with you in it i do like that one and i have a total mess you guys need to or maybe you don't need to come craft me with me someday and you would see that kelly is a messy crafter. Maybe you guys are messy crafters too, so we would get along. Be still. Okay, everybody's saying be still. All right, so let's do that one, and maybe I'll do mini messages on um, Thursday. Okay, so let's pull out, let's pull out the backer here just so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so what I like to do is I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit is I like to kind of lay everything out like this and I can even lay out come on I can even lay out my little vintage krill bouquet okay so you see where we're going now, now look how pretty that is okay and this is how I kind of decide where and what sentiment that I'm going to use. Because a lot of these in here are really great. But I can kind of adjust this, you know, up or down. And I could have a sentiment um, like down in here. Um, the world's a better place with you in it because you're in it. Okay, do you see how I can kind of get a look? And I can hold this up in the clear packaging and say, okay, that is going to be a great sentiment to die cut and set right down in there or let's see be still and know that i am god that would even be a pretty one down there do more of what makes you happy this is what i do normally when you guys don't see it that i kind of decide okay like where are we gonna go with the sentiments here and i know you guys probably do the same thing whenever the year takes me may it be happy that'd be a great birthday one but this is kind of how I walk through, um, you know, what's going to fit, what's going to be pretty, how much room do I need to leave myself? Because um, a lot of times for me, the sentiment is kind of like, oh, I, I forgot to stamp a sentiment. Okay, now it's going to be the trick of, there it is. Where did Kelly lay the scrap paper for the sentiment? But I found it. All right, here. So I'm going to move this little guy aside. I've got my Misty. And I'm going to put in my scrap paper. And this is from me doing die cuts and cutting all of the little bouquet and stuff out earlier. This is paper that I have left over. Okay, so let's do this. The world is a better place because you're in it. That That's a pretty one. All right, so let's put that one down and let's put it in here. And I'm going to get that really close. Lay that down and pick up the sentiment. And then I think I'm going to, let me think about this here for a second. Okay, white paper. Let's stamp it in. Let's stamp it in green. Let's stamp it in rustic wilderness because that'll be pretty. And that'll pull in the greenery. And the pattern paper. Tap, 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 tap. Double coverage here. Tap, tap, tap third time for good measure there we go and then that's going to be really pretty the world's a better place because you're in it okay so let's put the lid on before i make a mess i'm going to set this aside 
And then while this is drying and setting up, now I'm going to adhere all of my little parts. And this is so dang cute. Okay, so let's adhere our little frame. And I can just kind of skim right over the top of that. And then I can put it down and then I've got time to shimmy that around. But you can see how cute these um, Sweet Stacks ovals, they look really cute on there to kind of mix up that shape. And I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to make sure that that is really nice and straight. Press that down and then let's add adhesive right back in here. Yeah, let's do this flat. I almost thought about popping it up, but we have a lot of texture and things going. I'm going to leave space down here because I kind of liked it down in there. And then again, I'm going to hold this up. And then I'm going to add the little flap even back in there. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just tuck it in. And I can even like have it raised. It doesn't necessarily need to look like it's attached because all of our greenery is going to, do you see it right back in here? All of our greenery is going to cover that up. So it's fine, right? Because the recipient's never going to know whether it was like actually attached in there or not. Okay. I think that's cute. All right, let's do the sentiment. So we have the coordinating dies, and now is the puzzle of can Kelly find the coordinating die? But I'll walk you through um, how I look for it. So I know that we have a straight piece here, and I've got the scripty on the bottom. I've got a Y, and so I just kind of look around and... Let's see here. I don't think that that one is it. I look around until I find one that matches. And maybe this is it. Yep, that was it. The one that I didn't think was it. Okay, so let's line it up really well. So we did all that pretty stamping in green. Make sure that it's lined up really nice. Then I can just pull out my little bitty buzz cutter. And I can cut this out really quickly. There we go. And then let's pop her out. Put that back. Okay, now we've got our little die cut sentiment all ready to go. And then that is going to be so dang cute right down there. Look at that. Okay, that makes me excited. Now I like to, if I can find it, I may pop up my sentiment a little bit. I'm looking in my little dish. There we go. I like to use these little narrow, super narrow foam strips because they fit right back in here, even on these really narrow little sentiments. And I can peel that back. And of course, my tweezers are a wall again. There they are. And then I get my big fingers out of the way and I catch it in my tweezers just like this. And then I can kind of eyeball it and line it up and then press it into place here. Okay, now I did have like pearls pull, pulled out, but I don't think that this needs any pearls. I think that we've got so much going on with the greenery that we don't need anything. And then in this 
card, the more masculine fishing card, I did like the vintage ribbon type stuff. And I even made, like I'll pull it down here. I even made like, okay, well our basket might need like a little bow or a little ribbon. I don't know that it does. I don't know that, I don't know that it needs like anything because of all of our pretty greenery. I don't know, what do you guys think? Ribbon, no ribbon? Bow, no bow. Like I was thinking, like even over in here. But I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, what do you see? It's good as is. No, no bow. I see, I'm hearing you. I see you guys. No bow. No, it's fabulous. Stunning. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, what do you guys think? So we've got like the dude, husband, uncle, grandpa, son-in-law version. And then we have the feminine version, even though it's a little distressed. And that may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I thought it might be fun. It's usually, I usually don't splatter and do like distressing and uh, maybe a little bit, but not normally. Okay. All right. So there we go. Spring greenery. And so even though this greenery is supposed to be like, where is it on my desk? It's pretty large. Like see how, how big these pieces were? But do you see when we add it into like little vessels and things? Like it looks like just little blossoms and um, maybe even not necessarily like a geranium or something like that, but kind of along those same lines. All right, which is your favorite? Is your favorite the fishy version or the more feminine version? But we've got lots. Let's see, love them both. Thank you, Lisa. Gail, I have to get the basket. It's a really cute vessel. And you know what else I thought about? Let me tell you guys while I have you here and while I'm thinking about it, is you know how they hang... Um, let me see if I can get this ribbon to come out. You know how they hang like baskets and things like this, like on the front door? Well, I even thought, and this is some of that ribbon, that it would be super cute. Of course, if you didn't, I added all the things. But if you didn't add that much, you could even put like a little brad. So I even pulled out a little brad, you know, and make it look like it's hanging up in here. There's, you know, so many different little things that you can... Um, tuck in there. And I was thinking even Christmas, you know, you do the pine sprigs and do um, like a red ribbon or something like that and have the winter greenery or, you know, my mind was going crazy today as I was prepping all this stuff. All right. Feminine. I like them both. The flowery basket is my favorite. Okay. I'm glad that you guys are getting some little ideas on, um, you know, some things that we can do and mixing them with the um, other layering frames too. See, do you see how last week when I was telling you that this is so masculine because it's got the really hard edges and the points and the things like that. Whereas I think you could totally use this on a feminine card, but the soft edges and things like that read a lot more feminine to me for some reason. I don't know. Let's see, this would pair well with the box that holds a gift card, especially for a fish or a camper. Totally would. You could. You could pop that onto the little box or um, even pair them together as put a gift card in the box and then have this as the card that goes along with it. You totally could do that. Um, I think this would be awesome as a vintage picnic basket. You could totally do that. How cute. Who is this? Krista. How cute would this basket be with our lovely layers veggie dyes? That would be cute with all kinds of little vegetables and things tucked in there. Let's see. A ribbon braid would look at it totally would. Let's see here. Cabela's card. It would go well with a Cabela's card. Um, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So many vintagey cards. Yes, you could totally make all kinds of vintagey things in there. 
and it would make a cute little and you don't have to necessarily use the lid that has the little um wherever it is the little opening in it that makes it look um fishy so to speak but you could use the layering basket put little vegetables and things down in there and add like a little farmer's market sentiment or something like that oh veggies and the seed packets yes for a gardener absolutely you guys have the best ideas you're just feeding me full of ideas let's see here there's a camper again could be made into a sewing basket so many ideas i didn't even think about a sewing basket but you totally could do that yes you guys, we need to all craft together is what I think. I think we need to have a Honeybee Stamps crafting event. And um, I will have a class. You guys give me ideas and we all craft together. That would be so much fun. Let's see here. Thank you, Susan. All right. So many ideas. We all just need to get together. Okay, so Lisa is going to choose one of our wonderful friends there in the comments to win our giveaway tonight. And our winner, if you'll just email me at honeybee at Kelly at honeybeestamps.com to claim your prize. Let's see, that would be an awesome event. Yes, an event. I'm in. You're wel welcome, Erica. And then maybe I do, I don't know, maybe I use the vintage krill on Thursday and do a veggie basket. That would be fun. Let's see here. I'm just waiting for Lisa here. I know she's here. It would be fun. An event, a honeybee event. We could have a bunch of our design team members come and we could all get together and craft and have little classes do it yes chris you're gonna love this release did i miss the winner i don't think so i don't think i missed it mindy egan is game okay super craftual you are the winner. Okay, Super Craftual, if you will email me, Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I will get you your gift cards. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I will be back here Wednesday night. You never know what I will come up with to craft. Maybe we'll have a veggie basket. You never know. But thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye, friends.